Okay, we have a couple coming soon. Yes. We're going to get those out of the way, and then we're going to show what you can actually buy right now. <laughs> okay, you can sign up for this, which is a little pack that we made for TensorFlow Lite uh, Micro Edition Experimentation. So yeah. we thought people would want something that's battery powered, to give a microphone, that is display. So it's an all-in-one kit. There's a little bit of soldering required. You have to attach the headers onto the yeah. microphone and such. But uh, once you build it, you can follow along with all of our cool videos and guides on using TensorFlow Lite. Maybe I'll even show a demo right now showing one of the cool things you can build with it. All right. Which is our, so you would, you have it battery powered, which is kind of nice. Yeah. Machine learning on the edge. Yes, machine learning. So it can, uh, you can have little videos play. This is just one of the demos that we ship with our library. And then um, we like having the instructions on the display. And then, for example, I can see if it detects yes or no. Yes. And no. Yes Yay. or no. Yes or no model is pretty nice, and that's this kind of the default one. But you can take it from there. So this is just some basic speech recognition. But um, as more development occurs in TensorFlow Lite, especially for microcontrollers, uh, this will be a good platform because it has the buttons, the display. Um, you can plug in more stuff here. You can plug in stuff into the feather wings. So it's kind of a full. It's a nice full featured uh, dev kit. At so. this time, it's the only TensorFlow Lite conference badge functional machine learning audio graphic device. Looking forward to more. Yep. Okay. And it Next up. Okay. Um, this is super early coming soon, but if people want to sign up to get notified, um, we're starting the design of our Circuit Playground Bluefruit Edition. So this is yeah. kind of the first version I whipped up together. It's going to be a while, so sign up. We're going to play a video later about uh, us testing the range. Yeah, you're Work probably out. wondering, like, what's the range like with that? Because, you know, the antenna is kind of small in the middle. We'll get Turns to out it. the range actually is pretty good. We'll show you a video where we tried out with an iPad. Okay, this is available right now. This is a handheld sticker kit uh, designed by you and uh, Bruce Yan. It features every handheld that was made that we could figure out uh, between uh, 1979 with the Milton Bradley Microvision. These are all um, removable vinyl stickers, so you can decorate your electronics with them. And of course, the uh, famous uh, Nintendo Game Boy. So you can move this sticker and you can um, stick this onto your game or your laptop or your notebook or whatever. And uh, pick which ones that you had, the Atari Lynx or the, the Bandai Wonder Swan or yeah. the Sony PSP or the Nintendo Game Boy I Advance. A, I want to be a Wonder Swan. N Nokia N-Gage. The N-Gage, look at this, like, yeah. nutty device. Or the Sega Nomad, which was huge. Or like the Mega Duck Cougar Boy. So we always had people from the community say, like, what handhelds did they have? Some of these I didn't even know about, like the Watara Supervision. The, the Mega Duck Cougar Boy? Or the Mega Duck Cougar Boy, <laughs> which is pretty cool. I think we made that one up. Okay. Okay. Anyway, so there's uh, the game park, which I do remember the game park. So um, it's like, it looks like there's almost like 50 stickers total. And uh, you can uh, pick up this kit and then pull and peel away your favorite handheld. Retro gamer stickers. Um, this is a little spring antenna, very handy. It's just a copper coil, but it's uh, coiled just right to be a nice 900 megahertz antenna. It's low cost, and you solder it onto any of our LoRa or RFM69 boards that run at around 900 megahertz. It's you know plus or minus a little bit, so you can use it with 868 up to 915, and uh, you can see just you can solder it onto the end there, um, and uh, it's compact. It's it's uh, pretty sturdy, and it gives you good range without having to have a long wire or like a big chunky antenna. So it's a kind of nice in between thing, and it's also like a buck, so that's pretty nice too. Uh, from Slice, I've been using these tools, and I actually use them on a day-to-day -day basis, so I thought it would be good to maybe stock them because I like them. These are ceramic blade cutters. So this is a um, box cutter with a ceramic blade. We also have it in kind of like X-Acto knife style, um, craft knife style. So it's, you know, if you've used craft knives before, it works just like those normal craft knives. It's incredibly sharp and um, very fast to cut with. But because it has a ceramic blade, first off, it doesn't dull as easily, we found. I am still using it. 
It's not good for cutting um, some material, but for cardboard and crafting and fabric, it works quite well. And uh, it's safer than a metal blade. It's really hard to cut yourself. Now, I don't want to tell people you can't because someone's going to be like, look, I cut myself with it because I tried really hard. You can cut yourself if you really want, but it's much, much more difficult because it doesn't have that sharp metal edge. It's ceramic. And this one has a retractable blade. So I'll show it. Yeah. On the overhead. Just but, by the way, hey, logo designers over at Slice, nice job. That's pretty good. That's a pretty good logo. It's nice. Nice logo. So I'll show them all on the overhead. But I like these, and I think if you're going to be doing cardboard crafting or cardboard robotics, which we did you know, last year a lot with Cricut, um, then this is a really nice way of letting younger people, um, or even just people like me who are, who are older but clumsy, um, the, the retractable blade, and yeah, it's, it's ceramic. It's, it's, it's sharp for cardboard and paper. Like it cuts very cleanly and easily, but it's, it's not going to easily cut you. Again, if you really try, you won't hurt yourself, so don't try. But it's uh, much better, in my opinion, than um, a metal blade. And uh, you have good control over it. You can do interesting shapes. And then this version is, okay, this is kind of my favorite one for box cutting because it's, uh, it's got a nice long blade and it retracts, but it's got a, a good handle. So between these two, these were my favorites of the uh, slice tools and uh, they're not too expensive. And I think a, a good investment when you don't want to cut yourself by accident. Okay, we have Wireframe Magazine and if you like Wireframe or if you just like magazines or if you just like Adafruit or if you just like the Pi Badge, um, there's an article about it. Yep, so this is... There's other articles, I think, but this is the one I was most <laughs> interested in. This is uh, Wireframe Magazine. This is the, not the current edition, this is the previous edition. Um, but they're all very good and, and very, you know, they're not time sensitive. You'll, you'll learn trips, tricks and tips uh, for game writing uh, from now for the next couple of years easily. And uh, so this one is the Dance of Death. And yes, it features the Pi Gamer, but also has a bunch of other... Um, cool uh, articles um, with gaming news, how to write games, um, how games have been written. Um, like this kind of like historical like game, like it's like a yeah, it's one of the best game game, or something. gaming magazines already. So good work, yeah. Raspberry Pi Foundation. Like how games are written. So they they talk to you know game writers, and what I like is that you know it's interspersed with like here's code, like how to actually write code, how to pick your palettes, but then also like the concepts behind games, like how do you, how you think about games. So you know, everyone loves playing games, um, whether you're, you know, writing them, playing them, modifying them. I mean, Mario Maker just came out and that's a game that you write games in. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of neat uh, to see in this magazine. Oh, cool. We've got the uh, original meme yeah. graphics um, for old like 8-bit games and stuff. So uh, yeah. pick it up. Wireframe. Next up. All right, we've got the uh, particle shield for from seed for growth, but it's kind of like it's named that because it's Look, designed for particle, but it's actually a feather wing. I'm just gonna say it. Seed made a feather wing. It's a feather wing. Seed made a feather wing. Feather feather takes flight at seed. This is cool. Yes, it's uh, <laughs> it's got the particle logo. It was commissioned by Particle, but you can plug any feather wing into it. Uh, yeah. feather feathering into it. We and you, want to see more feather wings in the world. Thank you for making this. Yes, and you get uh, globe connectors for the UART, for I2C, for the analog pins and digital pins. The only thing I'll note is if you're not using a particle, the digital pins may be named differently on your feather, so you'll just have to like correspond them. But the analog pins, the I2C, the UART can be the same, and it's solder free, and you can of course plug in your feather and plug in any of the hundreds of globe connectors that uh, Seed has That's made. Right. Next up. Last up, star of our show is this beautiful. 2.0 inch IPS 320 by 240 display. I like this because we've had 1.8 inch displays that are lower res, 2.2 inch that are a little higher res, and then finally we have um, a 2.0 inch, which is like right in the middle, not too hot, not too cold, not too spicy, not too mild. Uh, IPS display, it looks really good, and it's because it's IPS, it looks good from um, multiple angles, which is something that you get with IPS. So a lot of times displays, they don't look good at angles, but this one, I mean, it's darker, but you still get a pretty clear oh, vision. Good. Even 
even over a webcam it looks good, but in person it looks even better. Yeah, so it's a, it's a really beautiful display, nice and bright. And uh, it's Arduino compatible and CircuitPython compatible. And then on the back, um, there's an SD card slot and it's level shifted. So it's just like all of our other TFT breakouts. It's ready to rock. So let's okay. put this right in. And you can see it initialize and draw. So this is slow because it's on a Metro 328, but uh, on a faster display, of course, it'll be nice and bright and fast. And it's using the ST7789, in case you're wondering. That's our new products.